And joining us now to discuss the crisis in Haiti, Alexandre Dauphin, coordinator and medical leave of the St. Joseph's Health System International Outreach Program, of course, in Hamilton, Ontario. We're glad you could join us tonight uh, under such terrible circumstances, I'm sorry to say. How much information, Dr. Dauphin, are you getting from Haiti right now? First of all, thank you for inviting me to come. Uh, we are it's very sketchy, the information, but we managed to have, uh, finally this morning, to speak to one of the former physicians who is back now in Haiti, an anesthesiologist. And uh, we then have some good sense as to what's happening there. Unfortunately, she's barricaded in a sense because everything is destroyed, even the roads. She can't even make it to the hospital. So how but, are you in touch? Uh, Cell phone? Uh, finally, we have a, a vonage, that's called, and uh, okay. we managed to get that. Cell phone doesn't work at all. Hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and again, this morning, I, we managed to get an email that's from the northern part of Haiti, where someone has a satellite. So we end up having this information. And then I managed to get some other uh, information from New York or from uh, Montreal by calling people who may be lucky to be in touch with someone. I see. And then you find who is alive and who is not alive. You're from Haiti originally. I'm from you Haiti grew up originally. There. That's right. You've still got family there. Still, my mother is there, and uh, a lot of close friends and other relatives. Have you spoken to your mother? No, could not get her. Uh, but uh, I have a friend nearby who did send me that email this morning to tell me everything is okay in the area where my mother is. That means she's okay. Good news. Very relieved by this. How about your other friends and family? Have you oh, heard from any of them? Oh, it's, uh, we haven't heard with just second hand, except for one. And uh, when you hear that the person, just to know that the person is alive, that's all that matters at this stage. And then you can build from there. And uh, I, I heard uh, that we have a board that looks after our interest, medical interests there. Uh, three out of them I've heard already are alive. So I don't know about the other two. So that concerns us and many other relatives of the uh, Haitian community in Hamilton can't hear much. And that's very anxiety provoking, almost destroying, you can't sleep at night. Uh, we've seen just the most horrendous pictures on television all day long. Right. Do, uh, in spite of that, do you feel that you yet have a very clear understanding of the extent of the damage? No. Uh, from what you hear, you have a sense, you have some understanding. But f being there, when I spoke to my friend this morning and seeing it and the psychology part of it, uh, you can't describe it from afar. You have an idea, you imagine what it's like, but I've never lived in something like this. The last earthquake was over 200 years ago in Haiti. So that's really... Uh, not ex uh, ex uh, cannot explain it. However, she mentioned that she can't even go to the main university hospital where she works, and uh, they have a makeshift hospital in the area where she is, and that's where they're providing aid. But they did have a huge uh, tornado or so, like a year or two ago, did they not? Oh, yes, hurricane. Uh, hurt two of them. Yeah. yeah, but not comparable to oh, what no. happened here. Not, not, not comparable, because right. it was more regionalized. Compared to that. This one is it's compartmentalized as well to Port-au-Prince, but it destroys almost 40 to 50% of the whole city of 3 million. Hmm. Uh, the Haitian Canadian community, you talked about Hamilton a second ago. Right. Give us your sense about how more broadly across the country it's responding. I think it's responding very well in the sense that uh, there's some despair as well in the sense we're very resilient people, but it seems that we, the community is shaken at its foundation now, and we hope that uh, we can rise again to be what we should be. Unfortunately, um, the, by not having communication, it's pretty hard to know exactly what to prepare for. But mm -hmm. at this stage, everybody is rallying up uh, from Montreal, I know, to Toronto here in Hamilton. Everything is in motion. And my hope is we will be able to come to help uh, better. Your organization at St. Joe's in Hamilton, uh, what kind of a relationship have you had in the past with Haiti in, in dealing oh, with Oh, this is very precious. Uh, St. Joseph uh, Healthcare System has an international outreach program. For the last 20 years, since 1990, personally, we've been involved in Haiti in a comprehensive way in that uh, we look at uh, building infrastructure and uh, educating and providing supplies. Those are the three uh, aims uh, we have had. And we've been very successful to the point that even the Ministry of Health has recognized to hand us over one of the university hospitals now to co-manage with them. Mm -hmm. So we have been very successful and very credible 
uh, in that sense. You had a meeting earlier tonight at St. Joe's about how to yes. respond? Yes, we did have a meeting and uh, it was very good and I'm very thankful we did that as well. It allows us to comprehensively approach the, the, system, the problem again. So what did you decide? Uh, we decided to have a, a, first, a first acute phase approach where I will be going down as soon as I, they give permits for, for, for flight and assess the situation and from there feedback here in Hamilton and the team will come according to specific needs. When do you hope to go? We hope to go probably Tuesday, the, later, the latest I think. I'm hoping to go Monday or Tuesday whenever I can get a flight to go. There's essentially no, I mean nothing's working there. There's no government. You're not going to get a visa I presume or how are you going to handle all this? Well we Canadians uh, don't need visa to go to Haiti so that makes it easier that okay. way. And, uh, and, but, uh, but do you know issue, that you can fly in there? Well, my hope is that they will be, will be flying because uh, the Americans I understand that are already there looking at the, the runway and uh, setting up the, the, the tower, con the air control tower. That will take us there. My concern now is that I know the Ministry of Health personally and I haven't been able to be in touch with him. So I don't know who is in charge of anything at all, if there is any. Talk to us about the most common forms of, um, well, I guess, disease that it take place after something like this happens? Oh, the first thing is uh, you, have, you, you lose everything that pertains to sanitation, and plus you have uh, death and decay. So all kind of bugs grow up there. In particular, you have uh, a good setting for um, epidemics of, uh, of oh, you, you, it's immense. Uh, the water is not good, typhoid is one, and uh, contamination from, we don't have cholera in Haiti, fortunately, and uh, that will help us not having that, but all kind of bacterial and, uh, things will come to that. And that's compounding on the traumas you have and the infections of the people that will die. It's just, can't, you can't describe it. Would, you, uh, would Ebola make a comeback in that kind of environment? With what? Ebola virus? No, uh, we that. don't have Ebola in Haiti and uh, it's mainly Africa uh, located. So we're thankful for that. Uh, but uh, all kind of blood-borne, water-borne, and environment infection will come. Diarrhea, malaria, oh, that kind of huge. thing? huge. That goes without uh, saying. And people will die of that, won't they? They will die of that. And on top of that, you have starvation and uh, decrease of resistance and uh, not having water. Uh, it's, it's, it's an inferno. It's, it's, it can't, can't be described. What kind of medical supplies do they need down there right now? Presently, it's an uh, emergency thing. Food, water, as medical supply, of course, <laughs> in this situation like this. And uh, we need to have antibiotics. Uh, uh, I've intravenous for rehydration, a lot of antibiotics, and uh, anesthetics for the broken legs to can bring uh, solace uh, to the people. And uh, above all, you need uh, support care. How, how do you provide care to people who need it when the medical infrastructure of the country is essentially destroyed? Well, you have two things. You have to innovate um, and make shift hospital. That's what uh, you'll do. And the second thing, to use what you have there. Uh, Sometimes you may have part of the hospital left with some you can use and quickly setting up infrastructure that may help to provide that kind of care. It's, uh, it's war zone hospital, war zone hospital, uh, war zone care. From what you've heard so far, how's the world responded? The world, I'm very impressed with the, what I hear the world is doing. Uh, and very, we're very thankful for that. Uh, I, my, my, my concern is that it will not be only a short-lived response because it's going to take time to rebuild the country and rebuild the infrastructure of that country. Uh, my prayer would be that the world will continue with the journey. As uh, uh, it has been mentioned by many of the world leaders, to put the country back to normalcy. And uh, sometimes, unfortunately, this is lost after the big event and people turn their backs. We in Hamilton, we're looking at having a very comprehensive, continuous program. Uh, since we've been there already with our own program, that's going to be parallel or even uh, a subsequent to what we do. Mm -hmm. But the world should stay there, but I'm very thankful they, they're responding very well. Well, for example, I had a friend of mine email me today right. saying, She's watched it all day long, and she thinks she ought to get on a plane as soon as she can to go down there and help. Would you recommend people do that? No, uh, because uh, presently one of the problems they have is place for people to stay. And when you get there, 
uh, if you don't have contacts, if it's not organized and synchronized, you just come to compound the problem, really. Mm. It's to get in touch with uh, a system and be able to uh, plan the trip. And that's why I did not go fly to the Dominican Republic and cross the border. That doesn't make sense. You have to have a sense as to where you go and what you're going to do. And uh, pr probably the most important thing at this stage is to uh, start with, su with support, uh, with uh, finance finances for the, what's already there on the ground. So give money. Give money, they say. That's no question. And don't hop on a flight. No, not, no, unless it's specific as to what one is going to do. And one has to have contact with uh, an, an agency or an organization who can't really tell you, okay, you're coming to do this. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you get frustrated as well by being there. It may be in the way as well. One last thing. The Canadian government, how would yes. you rate its assistance? Uh, Canada is always uh, one of the closest friends Haiti has ever had, and very high. Uh, what I wish also is that uh, we follow up on what we're doing so that we, have, we can measure our outcome. There's no point of giving the, the, the gifts and not to come back to the people and say, this is what we have accomplished. Mm. Uh, it is time, in my suspicion, it is time now that uh, accountability will be called on for everything we do. The taxpayer should know that's been done because we can't keep on repeating ourselves in the things we do in this world. But I'm very thankful for this country in which I live and my kids are here. I've given them two great citizens, I hope. Hmm. And uh, with this, uh, we look forward to this country being rebuilt and also as it's being rebuilt with codes, with uh, serious infrastructure and also having the people coming together not having the disparity of rich and poor, living up the hill and down the hill, but having uh, this, the, the, the togetherness of it. Because when a uh, uh, an earthquake like this happens, it involves everybody, everybody. When, I think we were all very moved by the Governor General's reaction, yes, which yes. you no doubt saw. Yes. Do you think it's helpful to the cause that our Governor General has this very deep connection to that country? It, it should be profitable. In the sense, because uh, not only you have the person speaking, but there's emotion in there as well because it's comp directly attached. Um, I uh, I call call it for tweeters as well, and uh, greatly appreciated that uh, we have a country like this where uh, what you are can be proven and be accepted. So we're very thankful, and we thank uh, this country for allowing people to evolve. We we do. Dr. Dauphin, we wish you well with your Thank efforts. Thank you very much Thank for coming in Thank you very much. Tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you.